Introduction Friends, as we all know that we need energy for performing various daily activities. We get this energy from the food that we eat. So we can say that nutrition is a process by which all living organisms take food and utilize it to get energy. Both animals and plants are living organisms. Like animals, plants also require energy for their life activity. Thus, nutrition is an important life process of all living organisms. Objectives At the end of this lesson you'll be able to Define nutrition Describe autotrophic mode of nutrition in plants Explain the process of photosynthesis Describe heterotrophic mode of nutrition in plants Explain the different types of heterotrophic mode of nutrition Dear friends now let's know about the mode of nutrition. There are two types of nutrition modes. Autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. But what are they? The mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances is called autotrophic nutrition. And these organisms called autotroph. Green plants are the examples of autotrophs. The mode of nutrition in which animals and many other organisms take in ready-made food prepared by the plants is called heterotrophic and these organisms are called heterotrophs. Human, lion, tiger, etc. are the examples of heterotrophs. As we know that green plants synthesize their own food. But do you also know that how they synthesize their own food? Actually, green plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process by which green plants synthesize their own food from the carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and solar energy. Now you know that in plants, water, Minerals and carbon dioxide are raw materials for the synthesis of food. Do you also know that how do plants obtain these raw materials from the surroundings? And how do they transport them to the food factories of the plant? Water and dissolved minerals are absorbed directly from the soil through roots and sent to the leaves by the means of many small vessels present in the stem. These vessels run throughout the root, the stem, the branches and the leaves. They form a continuous path or passage for water and minerals to reach the leaf. Likewise, carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny or small pores present on both surfaces of the leaves. Such pores are called stomata. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. After reaching to the leaf, carbon dioxide and water react in the presence of sunlight to form carbohydrate. The carbohydrate ultimately converted into the starch which gets stored in the different parts of the plants. Therefore, the first food product is formed during the photosynthesis is starch. Starch is also an example of carbohydrate. In this process, oxygen is also released. Therefore, the process of photosynthesis can be represented as carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight gives carbohydrate plus oxygen. In the presence of sunlight, Carbon dioxide and water gives carbohydrate and oxygen releases in this process. Till now we have learnt about the photosynthesis process, but now the question is, what is its significance? Photosynthesis is an important and vital process for life on this planet. 
This process helps in the conversion of solar energy into organic matter. Hence, photosynthesis links the physical and biological world. It is the primary source of organic food for all living forms, either directly or indirectly. It also helps in purifying air and maintaining the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the ecosystem. Friends, now it's time to have some fun. Just check your understanding by clicking on true or false button. Friends, now let us know about those plants which do not have chlorophyll and cannot synthesize their food on their own. Just think about how do they survive and from where do they derive nutrients. As we have already learnt in this module that these plants derive food from other plants and animals and this type of mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The plants in which this kind of mode of nutrition is found are known as heterotrophs. There are four types of heterotrophic plants. Parasitic plants, saprophytic plants, symbiotic plants, insectivorous plants. Now let's learn them one by one in detail. Let's start with parasitic plants. The plants which obtain their food directly from other plants are known as parasitic plants and those plants from which they obtain food are known as host. You might have seen Cascata, Amarbale, nearby you which is an example of a parasitic plant. It coils around the stem and branches as a yellow tubular structure. You'll be surprised to know that it does not contain chlorophyll so it takes ready-made food from the plant on which it is climbing. The plant on which it climbs is called a host. When you go to a vegetable shop you might have seen packets of mushrooms sold in it. Besides that, sometimes you may have also seen fluffy umbrella-like patches growing on rooting wood during rainy season. But do you know what these organisms are and how they get their nutrition? Friends, these organisms are commonly called fungi and they get their nutrition from dead and decaying matter. To get their nutrients from dead and decaying matter, they secrete digestive juice and convert it into a solution. This mode of nutrition, in which organisms take in nutrients in solution from dead and decaying matter, is called saprotrophic nutrition. And organisms which use this kind of mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs. Thus, we can say that, Fungi are saprotrophs. The next category is of insectivorous plants. There are a few plants which can trap insects and digest them and get nutrition. For example, pitcher plants. Actually, these plants can synthesize their own food by photosynthesis, but they grow in nitrogen-deficient soils, so such plants fulfill their nitrogen requirement by eating these small insects and hence are called insectivorous plants. Friends, like us, plants also require a lot of nitrogen to make proteins. So they absorb nitrogen continuously from the soil due to which the amount of nitrogen becomes deficient. As you all know, that there is 78% of nitrogen present in our atmosphere, but plants cannot use it in the manner directly as they can use carbon dioxide. They require nitrogen in soluble form. The bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a soluble form. These bacteria live in the roots of gram, bees, moon beans and other legumes and provide them with nitrogen. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. Thus, we can say that rhizobium shows a symbiotic relationship. 
Friends, now it's time to have some fun. Just check your understanding by matching the following. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. The process by which all living organisms take food and utilize it to get energy is called nutrition. Plants obtain their food by two modes, autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition. In autotrophic mode of nutrition, plants synthesize their own food by the photosynthesis process and are called autotrophs. Photosynthesis is a process by which green plants synthesize their own food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight. In heterotrophic mode of nutrition, plants do not synthesize their own food but directly depend on other plants and are called heterotrophs. Parasitic plants obtain their own food directly from other plants which are known as host. The mode of nutrition in which organisms take in nutrients from dead and decaying matter is called saprophytic nutrition. Lichen is a specific group of plants in which both algae and fungi live together. This is called symbiotic relationship. Insectivorous plants can synthesize their own food, but they fulfill their nitrogen requirement by trapping or eating the small insects. For example, Nepenthes, pitcher plant, Drosera, etc.